On today's episode, I visit one of the most well-respected and arguably the best injector company on the market, Injector Dynamics, and I pick up our badass 2000 injectors. Finally, yes. Let's go inside and take a look. Before I go introducing the owner of uh, Injector Dynamics here, I wanted to show you this little sticky mat. And this is an attention to detail that I really like. And it what? <laughs> Keeps this place kind of clean, doesn't it? Yeah, don't get my floor dirty. That's right. You'll be in trouble. Can I this check is... the bottom of your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot because they are very dirty. But Paul Yaw, you are Injector Dynamics. I'm one half of Injector Dynamics. Good to know. Tony at T1 is the other half. Excellent. Of course, I'm the cooler half. Perfect. Make sure that stays in there. I do not want that <laughs> edited out. That's got to stay. That's great, yeah. great. Yeah. So, Paul, tell me a little bit about Injector Dynamics. Obviously, you're known for your injectors. Imagine that. Yes, sir. Um, you know, the easiest thing to do is to walk you through the process. I would love that. That's well, what we're here for. I sales pitch, right? Oh, yeah. Because I am wearing a nice shirt. I know. You shade, did dress up for me today, right? So I could bullshit you for 10 <laughs> minutes about how fucking awesome we are. Or we can just walk through like... Uh, a day in the life of a fuel injector. Perfect. So, so where do we start? Well, I forgot already. Let's see, where do we begin? <laughs> uh, as you probably know, um, the ID 725, 850, and ID 1000 are all modified production injectors. So we bring them in from Bosch, uh, perform various modifications to change the flow rate, and then match them up and send them out from there. So just so everybody understands, these injectors are Bosch Motorsport injectors originally that you modified? No, 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 no. That's an important distinction. The 725, 850, 1000, and ID2000 are a production-based injector. Ah, okay. And we're going to talk more about that later because when we talk about the ID1300, the ID1700, and the upcoming ID1050, those are all clean sheet designs that we designed in partnership with Bosch Motors. See, these are things that I, I need to know there and the viewers do as well. And it's even critical for walking you through because the process is different depending on what injectors they are. Precisely. So talking about the modified production pieces, which is what we started with, the ID1000 is, is what put us on the map to begin with. Right. Uh, we start over here in the, uh, in the boring corner of the shop. We make him sit in the corner all day. And basically, we just take the stock that comes in and get the injector unloaded, basically. Get rid of the O-rings, uh, get rid of the color identifiers so that we can start our process. And then back here behind him, in this really, really super high-tech funnel, <laughs> we, <laughs> we apply uh, an anti-corrosion agent to the inside and the outside of the injector. Uh, the reasons for that, I'm not going to bother going into detail, but we do that before the machining process. Gotcha. That's key. So, starts here in what I call the boring corner. Hey, you want to smile for the camera? Yeah, there you famous. Go. <laughs> See? Now he's famous. That's great. Now we go next door, and um, next door is where all of the boring, irritating, dirty things happen. So, you don't have to walk on that on the way out, because oh, I, I, I don't care if you take your dirt outside, but when we come back in... <laughs> You need to cross that. Definitely. All right. Basically, this is building four, that's building three. But what we call it is the clean shop and the dirty shop. I got you. So this is warehousing, shipping and receiving, that type of thing. You can see our PRI display there in the background and a bunch of stock on the shelves, full new stock coming in, all about a spec injectors, things like that. And then part of the injector modification process, which is a dirty process because it involves grinding. Um, that lathe um, has been specially modified for the uh, injector modification process. And so considering the, um, how, would I, how would I put it, the me too nature of the performance aftermarket, <laughs> yeah. I probably won't let you walk over and zoom in on that, right? That's that top be, secret, it, well, proprietary I, stuff. I don't know if I'd say top secret, but yeah, you don't get to zoom, how's that? That's good. Yeah, so <laughs> now we come over to, uh, now we come over to the most high-tech part of the operation, which is this little belt sander, right? Isn't that high-tech? Oh, yeah. Everybody's Everybody going loves the belt sander. Waiting I mean, to see that. Yep. that uh, here's what this is all about. That's a Scotch-Brite pad. We still do it by hand because we just haven't bothered to build a machine to do it. But the short story is the injectors that we do bring in from Bosch have a date stamp and some other things down at the bottom of the injector on the uh, chrome-plated portion. Let me grab an injector. Yep. So, down there at this bottom chrome portion, that's where we label the injector. We need to remove the existing labels. 
And so we do that on that machine. Because it's chrome plated, it doesn't, uh, it's a tough enough surface, it doesn't really remove any material, it just removes the existing markings so we have a clean spot to do our laser etching. I got gotcha. you. So, like you said, that's a really high tech oh yeah. production assembly here. Well, that's rowdy shit right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, so you can't zoom in on that. I don't want anyone no, to see that we use a Delta. I, I, <laughs> you can't have them know. But now I'm going to go to the part that, um, that gives this building the, uh, the name of the irritating building. This is the break in bench. It holds 48 injectors, and the purpose of this is that a fuel injector, like any other mechanical device, undergoes a break-in period, like um, seating a new set of rings. After oh, I didn't know that. Stuff, yeah, that that's interesting. And so, if we were to test the injectors fresh, and then send them out, there's going to be some small, small amount of drip. It's not huge, but it's an amount that matters uh, as the injectors wear in. And we found this out a long time ago after bringing in injectors over time, because we have so many on the market. We see them back after the end of a racing season or something like that. So the purpose of this machine is to break the injector in before we ever test it. And so it runs at 100 PSI at uh, 200 Hertz, which is 24,000 RPM, runs for a half an hour. So it ends up being nearly three quarters of a million cycles. And Holy essentially, <laughs> all it really does is let all the parts get happy with one another, just like inside of your engine. Yeah where the, uh, the crank journals need to get to know the bearings well, that right. type of thing. That's so all it is. It's a perfect break-in procedure for an injector. Yeah, it's nothing complicated, although it is a pretty neat machine, and I'm actually happy to show it off. That's, uh, That's quite the annoying <laughs> sound there, Paul. Hey, you want to work in here for a day? <laughs> That's why everybody's wearing earplugs, because listening to that thing with the vacuum going at the same time is, is just it's, enough to drive you batty. Yeah. yeah. So and, I, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> These have already been tested. We can shut it back down. I just wanted to show you yeah. what it sounds like to have 48 injectors rattling away at Right. Once. I was going to say, I'm ready to move on if you are, but... So now that we've been through that process, we're back to the clean, happy building. And uh, this is where we would bring in the, the new ID1050X, the ID1300 or the ID1700. At this point, now that the break-in's done, all the other little details are taken care of. Uh, it goes into this machine, which applies a, uh, a serial number and a model number. I mean, the model number, obviously, because the injectors look alike. But the serial number is how we track it for matching and that type of thing. Uh, you want to run one for them? Let's see how it looks Let's on camera. Let's do this, yeah. And it automatically consecutively serial numbers them. So the next injector will be one number higher than the previous one. All right, guys. Let's see if I can get you some focus here. Also, we can use this laser to burn your eyes out if you get dirt on our floor. Perfect. Yeah. I will leave here a blind man is what you're saying. <laughs> Oh wow, that is a neat process. It's Look a at that. Neat tool. It's a very really matrix tool. looking. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to believe all that coolness for just a little black uh little yeah. bit of black text, right? Very neat. And so the reason that we started lasering the injectors, or one of the reasons, is that we had a lot of problems with counterfeiting and it was happening all the time. Somebody oh, no. would call over T1 and they would say, Well, I bought these injectors off the internet, I bought them kind of cheap, I'm suspicious, what's the deal? And they would they would send us pictures and we'd say, no, yeah. those aren't our injectors, but that's how they were sold to them. And so at the time, we were laser engraving, or I'm sorry, hand engraving serial numbers on the injectors. Oh, damn. So every that's injector had a pen. Yeah. Well, and it got to be a pain in the ass once we got up into the five digit range too. We got it up there and it gets more complicated and we got to a point where we realized we were months away from getting into six digits. Right? So you, <laughs> right. you got a little engraver in your hand, you're trying to do six digits yeah. with this little piece of plastic. And you know, that hand engraved number, like um, when I buy custom sensors for the race cars, they've got hand engraved numbers because they're custom parts or low, low volume. volume, right? We were way beyond that at right. that point. So that's when we invested in the laser and uh, it's really made a big difference in the counterfeiting. Well, let's pull this thing out and- uh, Oh yeah. Show the people. Should I let you do it? Oh, uh, I don't know. Both hands in here. The camera's too big. Can you dial in on that? Uh, I will definitely dial in All right. on that. So there's the logo. There you go. Model number. Uh, Roll it around a little further. We've got our consecutive serial number. And now the injector's ready to be matched. Tested and matched because we can identify it. Obviously, we can't take um, 
10 or 100 or 300 injectors and, and try to match them up based on laying them out in order on a table. Right, so uh, explain to people what matching means. Um, people get the concept for the most part, I think. They, they think of matching as having two injectors that flow the same, or two or four or eight or 10. Mm -hmm. The critical thing for us and what started what started the company in the name Injector Dynamics is that instead of just doing a static flow test, which tells you what the injector does when it's wide open, we were testing them dynamically and matching them up across the linear operating range. Um, so it's, it's so entirely it's the, possible. an even more complex extra step, but it brings yeah, more precision to each and every far injector. Far more precision. And it's entirely possible to have two injectors with the same static flow rate that are nowhere close to each other dynamically. And the problem tends to worsen as the pulse width goes down. So you can run into some real issues there in terms of um, like drive idle ability. characteristics, you know, picture, partial throttle. Yeah, picture um, you know, you're, you're running an IMSA or a Grand Am and you've got caution laps where your tuners work really, really hard to work on the um, um, fuel economy of the car during that portion. That light cruise and light on and off the throttle, you can't have the car bucking and snorting at that point because one cylinder is you know 10 or 12 percent lean. Right. Um, throttle response on corner exit, that type of thing. So it's all these little details that added up to getting an injector that does in the car what it does in the flow bench, I got which you. you just don't get with a static flow right. test. And that's what these machines over here are for? Or? Yeah, that's where we go next. All right. So for the production work, uh, we have two benches. In fact, let me get in here a little closer so you can see yep. them. For production work, we have two benches. They run all day long. Um, they only test one injector at a time, uh, and that's for the sake of accuracy. But because of that, it has to be very efficient. So I'm going to get Asa in a minute to come over here and run an injector so I can explain the process. Right, but and this is all custom-built equipment by you? All built in-house. There you uh, go. Everything from the, the fabrication on the flow head to the wiring and the plumbing and the control system that runs it all because it is an automated process. Other than lifting this handle to pop the injector out and put a new one in, the entire process is automated. Right. So if you want to pop one in there, oh, do it over here instead. Uh, that bench is going to catch on fire, so here, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> now it's going to explode. Anyway, <laughs> this one's in the middle of a test right now, and uh, we're using Motec on this, too, by the way. And Damn. it's the same thing, they just never fail. You just put a Motec on it and, and leave it, so maybe you'll have to tag yeah, Motec. Most in people are probably pissed off because <laughs> we're wasting them, it on a flow bench. That's right, they're yeah. like, it's on a flow bench, I need that on my car. Yeah, here it goes, so he's going to change it out. Injector goes. I would see injector codes. Yeah, comes out, checks the serial number. Puts it in the tray in order, which makes it easier to track them later. Saves the file, which gets saved to a database. And then he starts the test. And so the important thing about this test, or any test if you want to match injectors, is that the test conditions are exactly the same for every test. And so this, uh, is, uh, good point. this is both temperature and pressure control. It's a closed loop system, a PID loop control. Uh, which most tuners are familiar with, or and anyone not, industrial That's not controls. water, is it? No, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what that is. That's a secret, uh, secret sauce. There you but go. But <laughs> if you touch the head, you can feel it's hot. Yep. And the reason is that we're simulating a hot injector running on an engine. Oh, that's and, brilliant. And right now, for the first 30 seconds, the only thing that's happening is the injector is being run at 90% duty cycle for 30 seconds to do two things: one, to warm up the coil. And the other is to let that warm fluid flow through the injector and get all the internal parts hot. Because Again, obviously to simulate. everything expands with temperature. Right, right, brilliant. So if we were to track the dynamic flow during that period, you would see the flow lessen a little bit over time as the injector heats up. And so we've got a time so that it reaches the point where it stabilizes and its flow no longer changes, its dynamic flow. Yep. Then we start the test. And so this particular test is made up of five data points. And you can see the fuel flow here at the first data point, second data point, third data point. It's going to do five. And, and that ranges from 30% to about 90% duty cycle. So what happens then is this data gets saved and we do uh, a linear regression on those five data points to determine the slope and offset. So most people don't want to hear linear regression, so here's the, uh, the uh, normal description of what that means. <laughs> right. It's a straight line approximation. If I were to, on a graph, put five dots on there that represented the flow during these periods of time right. and draw a straight line through it, that line describes the slope, which is the flow rate of the injector, and the offset where it passes through zero, which is what you put in your ECU for battery compensation and things like that. I'm so, learning so much already. Yeah, and you'll notice that, that it sat at each point for quite some time. 
And the reason for that is that in any, any measurement process, there's some amount of randomness. There's always some amount of noise. So if we were to run the injector at, say, five milliseconds and just reach out and grab that flow at one, one single point in time, it might not necessarily be representative of what the injector is doing. So it goes I through there at five okay. seconds each, and you can and see... And that gives you enough time to... We can, we can average the results right. from there. And also, there are number, uh, numerous um, bits of error uh, controls that are built into this. All of these boxes here will light up if there's a problem. So okay. if the fuel pressure is off, we see a problem. If the bypass flow is off, it tells us there's something wrong with the machine. If you try to test the same injector twice, It'll light up, meaning enter the same serial number twice. Uh, okay. It'll light up red and tell you, hey, you fucked up. Right. Um, it monitors the voltage. If the voltage moves outside of uh, uh, a relatively tight range, it throws the test away. And then for each one of the data points, and this may be more detailed than you want. If it is, I'll move <laughs> on. For each one of the data points, we measure the coefficient of variation of all of the data points registered during that five second period. If there's too much scatter, meaning too much noise in the data, that tells us that there's something wrong with the test or possibly wrong with the injector and that we don't want to use that. Holy data. smoke. Yeah. And that is why and so that your catches, injectors are as good quality as they come well, on the, the market today, is, right? Like realistically, God, the amount of testing going on here, I've never really seen from a, from a fuel injector. Yeah, I always thought detailed. it was just like, put it on a flow bench, well, run it through, and you got it yourself a CC number, and you go from there. Well, it can be that, too. It just depends on how far you want to go. Right. I mean, you know, we make pretty strong claims about, about what we sell and what we put out there. Um, and so I'm happy that you're <laughs> here because you I, right? I get to walk you through, and you can see why. Yes. You know, people maybe wonder because there's so much BS in our market uh, if we're just talking. And so that's why I'm glad you're here, for someone to see these processes. And I am glad, through. too. Even all the boring uh, error signals. Right, there, right. right. <laughs> so... Uh, if, uh, if we want to step out of, out of the window here, oh, wait, let me show you one more thing. I did mention that each file was saved individually. So all the way back to 2007, I have flow data on every single injector that we've ever sold. Holy smokes. All the way back. So, and this happens occasionally, we will get injectors in for testing, uh, and we'll find that one of them has just been, you know, destroyed with dirt or something like that, or even something crazy like, like the customer breaks a connector off of it. We can go all the way back seven years and they can say, these are the serial numbers for my set and I broke serial number one, two, three, and we can look that set up and then choose a new injector that matches oh, the original wow. five or six or 10. That is fantastic. And so that's why everybody that's watching this, that's been through that process knows that that's how that goes. Yeah. That, that if they have a problem, we need their serial numbers so that we can we can fix we can replace it with an injector yeah. that matches. So you just don't pull one off the shelf no. and send it to them. You can't that's fantastic. If yeah. you say our that's injectors a good point. are tightly think matched, of that. Yep. and then you just send them out some random fucking mm -hmm. injector, you're not doing yep. anybody any favors, and it, and it makes the whole matching process kind of worthless to begin. I got you. So that's why we record all those serial numbers. Amazing. And where are we off to now then? We're off to right here. We're gonna walk all the way over here. Oh man! Did you make it okay? I did. We're you didn't okay. Spread any dirt. No. I don't I, okay. Don't even look down anymore. <laughs> yeah. There's there's dirt going everywhere. Yeah. These shoes are not clean. Yeah. I told you. I've been working in a workshop, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the injectors just get laid out here in order. Nothing special. When the batch is done, whether it be a batch of 200 or 400, we've got uh, we've got numerous little signs. So when Asa gets done testing all these, pops this on here. Says it's all ready. Takes it over to uh, Evan who sits there behind the cubicle because he doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> and he sorts through that batch of injectors and matches them up and then sends them back out with these two things. One is the note that says, hey, this is ready to pack and ship. We can get that out of here. And the other is, I don't know, do you want me to hold this up so you can sure, well, dial I'll it in? Sure, in. Right, so Show people these are all the injectors uh, on this tray. There's, there's two levels of injectors that have been tested. Off here to the right, we have all the injectors that we weren't able to match up. So for whatever reason, uh, we couldn't get them to, to fit into a set that we could send out to a customer. Some of them don't fit because they're so far out of our specification that we can't sell them. And unfortunately, we have a lot of those. And there's two reasons yeah. for that. One is that we're offering a tighter specification than the auto manufacturers typically uh, specify. But the other is that I mentioned some of the injectors that we sell are modified, and, and a fuel injector is a very high precision device. So no matter how hard we try, when we modify that injector, we end up changing its characteristics. And so what starts out as, as just ridiculously 
impressive quality control from Bosch, uh, you know, basically gets screwed up as we right. modify it. I yep. mean, that you know, that, that's the that's reality of the situation. Exactly. So we end up with a lot that just get, get tossed. Um, in any case, beyond that, you can see they're laid out in the sets here. Like here we've got a set of four, a set of four, a set of four. Here we've got a set of six. Here we've got another set of six. Sometimes we end up with groups of um, uh, eight, 12, 16. And essentially what happens then is the guys will bring the cart over here to the uh, packing station and they'll separate out those injectors by serial number. It might say the first set of four is injector number one, number seven, number 42, and number 58. And so they'll lay those injectors out and then they get sealed. The short story is they get sent off to T1 in Texas uh, in what we call strings. As you can see, that setup was mostly strings of four and six, but we often right. get strings of 16 or whatever. So let's say we have a string of 16 injectors that we send to our uh, T1 there in Texas. Um, and I call them and say, hey, I need some injectors for my S2000. They have numerous choices. <laughs> if you have a 16-cylinder engine in your car, <laughs> they can send you all 16 of those injectors. So I'm some baller uh, with a Bugatti Veyron? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like if you put a Veyron in your Tundra, right? right? A Veyron engine in your Tundra. There you go. So, so they know over there at T1 that uh, they can peel injectors off of that in order. They can turn that into four sets of four, a set of six, and a set of ten, whatever the case may be. They take the injectors, separate them, um, fit them with various top hat adapters and electrical connectors, whatever is required, like for instance a plug and play S2000 set. Right. And then put them in the retail packaging you're used to seeing. And I don't I don't know if we even have any retail boxes here to show you. We might, I'll see if I can dig one up. But um, that's essentially the end of the process at that point. And we ship, um, I would say we ship nearly every day. Uh, the thing that got us started with the machine shop idea to begin with is that we had an outside company making all of our top hats for us. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, Low Cash Racing, somebody watching the video is familiar with them. It's right here in town. Yeah. Good guy, super good guy to deal with. So we brought in the machine to make all of our adapters ourselves. The first machine is this Haas ST10Y. And uh, with a bar feeder, we load the bar feeder up and basically just, you know, fire it off and run away. And anyone who's familiar with the injectors has seen the various adapters that we have to fit whatever car it may be, well, like the one here in my hand. I gotcha, yeah. And so we crank these out here and then, like everything else, ship them off to Texas. So there are, you know, six different adapters that go on top, I think four different ones that go on the bottom. So you can take a basic injector and fit it into, uh, in our case, a couple hundred different applications. Yeah, yeah. very smart, cool. Yep. Yep. And we've been doing these for a long time. Um, uh, this is a good story. About uh, 2006, the very first uh, adapter that I ever made was for uh, 3R Racing. Um, for the K-Pax Volvos. Do you remember those from the Pirelli World Challenge? Yep. They were one of the first customers for the ID-1000. It was a lathe cut ID-1000. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a rough looking injector, but it, it did what we needed it to do. The results were there. And I machined, those are five cylinder engines. Uh, I machined 15 of those adapters by hand. Oh wow! So this thing with all the detail in it, yeah. by hand on the lathe, it took me like a day and a half. I believe you know, it. So I sent them out yeah. bare aluminum after turning wheels yeah. all day. That was one of the first steps. Uh, one of our first customers actually was those Very guys. Very cool. Yeah. Well, you've come a long way yeah, now. Yeah, this is a lot a better big than- fancy machine. Yeah, this is over so much better than turning, turning wheels. wheels right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you want to wander off into uh, the room with a fancy name? Let's do it. What, uh, what name is so that? So the name, the fancy name is the Metrology Room. Right? Ooh. Here's what it really means. It's where we measure shit. <laughs> I like it. So another sticky pad because you cannot get this floor dirty or you're in trouble. Uh, I will uh, stay over here <laughs> now. So the short story is in any machine shop, you have to measure parts when you're done for QC. And um, particularly uh, a couple of the parts that go into the ID1700 require pretty careful inspection. And uh, you can see we've got the microscope over there, and um, he was going cross-eyed from staring into that microscope all day long. <laughs> he was starting to run into things, right? That's the truth. So, so we got the video scope instead. And uh, uh, you're a kind man. Yeah. So there's a fixture here that we built. You can zoom in on that to see what he's up to. That uh, oh, you're not <laughs> you're not using it for this. Sorry, I caught him at the wrong time. The short story is we built a fixture to be able to rotate the parts and check every angle. <coughs> And these are injector parts? These are injector okay. internals. Yes. Um, that's another thing that I'm not going to let you zoom in on. <laughs> All you get to know is that those are some injector internals, but okay. you, don't get to, you don't get to dial in on those. So The then, audience uh, will believe you. Yeah. Back here we've got the, uh, you know, the basic surface plate, and profilometer, and, and comparator, and things like that. I mean, you know, the usual machine shop shit. Cool. Nothing too exciting. 
uh, except that we took the time to paint it white so it looks more uh, precise. Right. right, and tell me once again, <laughs> I don't know if I missed it or not, but uh, what are they looking for? They're looking for any imperfections in the machining process. I got you, okay. Yeah. So, wow, that's... for instance, when the guys were machining those parts, if, uh, if the, uh, the cutter was dull and the machine kept running and somebody didn't catch it, it can get to the point where it can fracture the material or start to leave burrs, that type of thing. So basically, uh, it's a surface finish inspection, not even a crack inspection, because one of these pieces is made from a material that, um, well, let's just say if you machine it improperly, you could crack it. Right. And wow. so, so those things cool. we have to look for to make sure that we get it You're right. You're blowing my mind here, Paul. And we still even uh, manage to screw it up on occasion. All for an injector. Yeah, <laughs> all for an injector. Incredible. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So that when we put it out there, we uh, we don't get them back with people screaming and hollering at us. <laughs> so, and we actually had to make a change uh, in the process for the ID 1700 because the, we sent out initially um, in the neighborhood of 4,500 parts, and out of those 4,500, we had 36 failures, which is, you know, on paper you can say that's less than a percent. It's yeah, not a big deal. That seems but, low. But that that's a big deal because ultimately you shouldn't have any failures with a fuel injector unless it's caused by contamination. I so, see. Um, part of the work that we did to identify and fix the problem happened, you know, right here in this mm -hmm. room, so we can inspect and see what's going on. And uh, we're processing the new parts now and putting the new design out there in the market. But um, you know, typical machine shop stuff, basically. Well, very cool. You might want to check his drink though and see what's in there before we leave. <laughs> we'll do that after. Yeah, I'll, Guys I'll use that. Guys and you know, he just you never know. Here we are building two. In order, right? We went to three, then four, then one, then Right, two. all over the place. But Fat this is now. the final building. This is the final building. This is the conclusion of our tour. Yep, and there's nothing too exciting happening over here. Anytime you're making oh, a part. Pipes are exciting to me. Yeah. Well, you're making a part in a machine shop, you have to start with something. And obviously, uh, for instance, to make our top hat adapters, we don't buy a bunch of one inch long pieces of material and machine them. They come in in, you know, 10 or 20 foot strips here. Right. Up on the rack. Um, and those pieces get fed through from the bar feeder just like that. But for instance, the, uh, the fuel filter bodies, the parts mm -hmm. we're looking at, start out as a big piece of stock like this, which is you know too heavy for us to hardly even pick up. You have to break that down into little pieces to get it in the machine to do the, the machine work, to fit it into the jaws and the vise. So this big monster here is a CNC controlled bandsaw. And basically you load this thing up and it'll just take sticks like that and chop it into all the little pieces you need. And if you roll around to the front side, past the tree, because everybody has a tree in their shop, right? Of course, Doesn't yeah. Doesn't everyone have a yeah. tree? Okay. So uh, it's gonna get big enough for me to climb one of these days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you roll around here to the front, you kind of get a feel for how it works. It spits out all the completed parts, and then you can roll them over next door and do your work. And like I said, it's CNC controlled. It looks pretty fancy with all its knobs and levers, but at it's the end of the day, cutting it machine. just cuts parts. That's all it does. Right. It's a fancy saw. or. Um, Maybe I should say an overpriced song. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, and now, then just you know the basic basic rough hand tools that are, yeah. that are required for a machine shop as well. And we try to keep the dirty parts. Speaking of rough over here. hand tools, what is going on over here? Well, this is a requirement. The, right? Yeah, you tell me about the uh, injector dynamics. Well, I can tell you about the gymnasium over here if you want to head outside. And, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, judging from the amount of weight on the bar over there, I would say somebody's wife was let's, probably... Yeah, let's go have a look here. But yeah, the idea is we don't want to get old. I mean, me particularly, so uh, I'm not in the gym as often as I should. Uh, but on occasion, I can come over here and use this one if I can't make it to the gym. And the guys are using it pretty regularly. It's just the basic shit, you know, a power cage and a squat rack and benches and, uh, you know... All right, well, this tour stuff. is over, so I'm going to thank you, and we're going to do... Some uh, some workout routines we are? here, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna lift some we're gonna lift some weights. Okay. We're gonna Who's make gonna this happen. More, me or you? Well, I, I'm pretty sure you got okay. me on this. I'm gonna but try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Uh, me too. I've never lifted weight in jeans before. So uh, <laughs> well, we'll get warmed up. Okay. But before that, Paul, tell people where they can find Injector Dynamics. Injectordynamics.com, Facebook. That's the best place. Injectordynamics.com. You know, we do have a Facebook page, but uh, like a lot of forget Facebook. Facebook. Pages, we're, it, we're over Facebook. We're all about content. Instagram. It, yeah, there you go. It's not <laughs> a lot of content. But Injectordynamics.com tells you a lot about the company. Uh, it's a pretty well laid out website. There's all the details you need in there for fitment, injector data. Applications, that's right. Application data, yeah, because that's the important there part. is one thing that I forgot, 
you owe me a set of injectors for a badass <laughs> 2000. So I do. Yep. before I leave, I am definitely yeah. picking those up. Yeah, yeah. And maybe a few more. I got to see That's the video right. first. That's right. <laughs> But yeah, InjectorDynamics.com, and we've got dealers all over the place. I mean, in 20-some you know, countries across the world and an awful lot here in the U.S. And we expect a lot of our dealers in terms of taking care of customers. So I Fantastic. think we've been out there long enough, people know where to find us or, or what dealer they can attach themselves to to, to take care of it. And then, of course, uh, they can always call the other the other half of Injector Dynamics T1 there in Texas for any issues or questions they may have. Definitely. You want a phone number? Nope. Okay. We'll, we'll get people can figure that stuff out. Yeah, good. But let's get back to more important things: <laughs> lifting weights. Whoa, 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 Paul! Let me take this first. Come on, bro! Go, bro! Come on, bro! You can do it! I'm not gonna be able to do this, but I feel like you can. What do we got here? How much weight? Oh, here's what. Here's too what, much. Here's what I, I, I want think, you to do. But... I want you to get the camera low enough that should one of my testicles. <laughs> Fall off my pants. <laughs> you can see it hit the floor. I will. Uh, I'll be the first eyewitness to see that. Right. So. Yep. But all right, here goes. Let's see if I can break something. You got this. <laughs> Let's do it. Don't this. make me laugh. I'll fuck this up. <laughs> I lost my grip at the end. Good man. That but you didn't huge. let me warm up. No. That's well, my excuse. See, this is what we do. I guess Injector Dynamics now has a reputation of a pole. Every time I come here, I'm going to watch Paul lift more. And instead, now I'll try to do a few with half the weight. Half the weight for sure. Shoulders Stand first. Shoulder. All right. I got a lesson. I'm seriously, I'm going to watch you to make sure you don't. Because if you are doing it wrong, I don't want to. Uh... Well. Your butt came up first, but you didn't arch your back. So yeah. That's okay. Yep. Okay, I think we're gonna call it there because I don't want to injure myself. We got the part of me screaming in your face though. That's yeah, good that, that's good enough. So. And yes, we have ID 1000 injectors for the badass 2000. So our Gen V ITB install will be complete as soon as I get back from Arizona.